Hi everyone, this is Kim. In this video, I'll be painting a quokka, which is a small wallaby found in only a few places in Western Australia. If you want to learn more about these cute creatures, you can check the links in my description to my other quokka videos, where I share some footage of them on Rottnest Island, and some interesting facts too. I'll be using this photo of a baby quokka, or a joey, from my trip to Rottnest Island in 2022 as my reference. If you want the line art and PDF instructions with the photo reference, I've left the link in the description to the bundle I created for my members on Coffee. but of course you can follow the tutorial here without them as well. The colours I've used for this painting are all from Schmincke, and they are Yellow Ochre, English Venetian Red, Burnt Umber, Sepia Brown, Ivory Black, and Prussian Blue, which I will use for shadows and mixing. I also use watercolour pencils at the end for some details. All materials will be listed in the description, and I'll label them later in the video as well. Before I get started painting, I first use a kneadable eraser to lift excess graphite off the paper so it doesn't dirty the watercolour. So to start, I tried a new technique where you first add an underpainting for the shadows. Now my light source is from the bottom left, so I'm using Prussian blue with a touch of ivory black to make a relatively dark wash, i.e. not too watery, and add this mixture to a few areas, and they are the base of the joey's ears, under the head on its back, around the eyes and the nose, and under the chin, around the chest and on the paws where they're close to the body, and finally on the inside edge of the tail and foot. And I let this dry completely before I add any more paint. Now for some colour. So first I'm adding a dilute wash of yellow ochre, and this will go over almost the whole body. I'm just leaving the nose and the eyes. While it's wet, I add in some of the English Venetian red or browns to match the local colour of the fur based on the reference photo. And because this is a first wash and quite dilute, it will dry lighter, but we'll be using layers to make it darker. By mixing colours wet and wet, you keep colour transitions soft and blurry. I did use a little bit of dry brush technique to skip the brush over the page and that leaves some white gaps when I'm doing the body and the leg, and that helps to give a bit of texture. For some areas I've done some lifting with a dry or a clean damp brush to keep them very lightly coloured, and so this is around the cheek and the front of the leg and the arm. I gave it time to dry and then went over the body with another layer to make it more brown and was very careful around the cheeks and chin to make sure they are still left light. I felt like the yellow ochre was too strong and it wasn't turning out how I imagined it in my mind. It actually looked quite ugly to me and I was ready to give up. But the reason why I didn't give up was because I wanted to see how it would turn out anyway if I kept going, even if I just used it as a practice to learn how to improve it for next time. I am glad that I persisted because in the end it really did come together and I'm very happy with the final painting. So don't worry if it looks like an ugly duckling right now, just take a deep breath and trust the process. Once again, I skip a few patches on the leg to help the layers below show through and for texture. If the surrounding head's dry, then you can add some detail to the eyes and nose using a small brush and some ivory black, but remember to keep the highlights blank.
Once everything's dry again, I go over with another layer, this time a little bit more pigmented. I'm still using wet and wet to allow soft transitions between colours and avoiding edges. On the body, I transition to a smaller brush for the darkest brown that I only add in some patches. And I do them making marks in the direction of the fur, which gives the fur some depth and variation in the color. Once again I let everything dry before I start the final layer of watercolours using a small brush for details. You can do this all in watercolour with tiny brushes or add some with pencil like I'll do next. I prefer to use watercolour pencil because it lets me soften any marks with a bit of water so that they blend and they're not so harsh, but normal colouring pencils will also work. I'm using Faber-Castell Albrecht Duro watercolour pencils in the following colours. White 101, Burnt Ochre 187, Venetian Red 190, Raw Umber 180, Walnut Brown 177 and Black 199. So with these I just add some sporadic fur marks all around the head and the body and strengthen the highlights in the eyes and nose with the white. Just don't go overboard with the details. So here's the final painting. If you're still here, thank you very much for watching until the end and I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!